We've seen how adverse selection can lead to the unraveling of a market, a market like unemployment insurance. In that market, we have high cost demanders, people who are at high risk of losing their jobs and would demand unemployment insurance and be likely to use that insurance because they're likely to lose their jobs. And we see an adverse selection of these high cost demanders into the pool of applicants for unemployment insurance and an adverse selection out of the insurance market of low risk demanders who impose low costs on the insurance company. And this can lead to an upward spiral in the premiums for unemployment insurance that eventually leads to the disappearance of the entire market. But there's another issue that emerges in areas like unemployment insurance, and that's called moral hazard. Moral hazard arises whenever our behavior changes as a result of the changed incentives after we enter a contract. So it's the change in behavior that comes from changed incentives. after entering a contract. Now in the case of unemployment insurance, the contract is the unemployment insurance contract. And if you enter that contract, your incentives about how to behave on your current job change. Before, you were worried about losing your job, so you might have put extra effort in to make sure you don't lose a job. But now that you have less of a worry about losing your job because you can collect unemployment insurance if you do, you might have more of an incentive to not put in as much effort, to not be as courteous to the other employees, and so forth. And that increases your risk to the unemployment insurance company. Now the unemployment insurance company can't tell whether you're the kind of employee who's always going to do a good job, or whether you're the kind of employee that's going to succumb to moral hazard, that's going to start slacking off on your current job when you know you're protected by unemployment insurance. So there's a new source of asymmetric information. You might know what kind of employee you are. You might know that as soon as you have unemployment insurance, you're going to take it easy on the job. Or you might know that you're the kind of employee who's always going to do the best you can on the job. But the insurance company can't tell. And so there's new asymmetric information that leads to an aggravation of the adverse selection problem. There's now an even bigger adverse selection problem because not only does the unemployment insurance company have to worry about are you a high, at a high risk or low risk of losing your job because of the type of job you have, but are you also the kind of person who's going to succumb to moral hazard and become even higher risk as soon as you've entered an insurance contract? So moral hazard is a second issue that emerges in environments with asymmetric information and it can add to that in asymmetric information and thus aggravate the adverse selection problem. It's also a big issue in a whole area of economics called contract theory. Where contract theory is all about how do we design optimal contracts and part of the issue, and one of the big issues that contract theory deals with, is how do we write contracts in such a way as to minimize the moral hazard that these contracts give rise to.